friends, and thank you for joining us. Uh, today is the seven, excuse me, the sixth Sunday uh, of Easter, and we gather again to worship. Um, I am Father Earl Mahan. I'm the rector at Church of the Good Shepherd in Town and Country and St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Manchester, Missouri. I'm joined by my colleague, Reverend Dr. Pamela Sturkey. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Earl. How are you today? I'm good. Um, as I said, we're at the sixth Sunday of Easter, which means we're nearing the end of the uh, 50 days of Easter. Um, coming in to uh, Pentecost Sunday. Um, but before we get to Pentecost, we will celebrate one of the um, important feasts of the church, uh, the Ascension of our Lord. The day of the Ascension is this coming Thursday, uh, May 21st. So we'll have a, a special worship opportunity that we'll uh, be posting uh, Thursday evening. Uh, we'll be doing evening prayer for Ascension Day. So I invite you to, uh, to join us uh, for worship uh, on Thursday, just as you are joining us on these Sundays during Easter. And uh, we look forward to being with you then. Today we'll be using, uh, as usual, morning prayer, right to, which you can find in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 80. Uh, or you can find a copy of the service that Pamela and I are using uh, from the websites of either church, stlukesec.org or goodshepherdec.org. Um, and with that, uh, let us begin our worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, Come let us adore, let us adore him. him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover. Pascha Nostrum, let us say in unison, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 66, verses 7 through 18. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of God's praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. 
I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the reading. Our response is Canticle 13, a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. This gospel reading is an immediate continuation of last week's gospel, where Jesus tells his disciples that he is leaving and that they can't go along, but that he is the way, the truth, and the light. All this is part of the farewell discourse that follows Jesus washing the disciples' feet. It seems a little odd to be reading from John's Maundy Thursday discourse in the season of Easter. But maybe we need the after-the-fact perspective to make sense of what Jesus is telling the disciples and what he is telling us. Throughout this reading, there are three pieces bound together. Keeping Jesus' commandments, love, and relationship. So just what is Jesus referring to when he tells the disciples, keep my commandments? If we look back a few verses in John to the end of the previous chapter, we find part of that answer. There, after washing the disciples' feet, Jesus tells them, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. A new commandment, one to go with the old commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might a pair of commandments given to us as well as a way to live out our love for God. But Jesus has just told the disciples that he's leaving, that the world will no longer see him. How can they continue to love him without him present among them? How do we? As well as looking back, this reading from John's Gospel points ahead to the Ascension, which we'll celebrate on Thursday of this week. In Jesus saying, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. But this reading also points further ahead to Pentecost. Here Jesus promises that God will send another to be with them forever, to abide with and in them, so they won't be orphaned. So who is this other? Well, as part of my study, I like to look at the various translations of the readings. Usually those translations are pretty close and the differences are minor and sometimes very subtle. But today's gospel is one of those places where it seems like every translator chooses a different word our reading says, I will send you another advocate. King James uses comforter. The New International Bible says counselor. The English Standard and the New American Standard say helper. And the Common English Bible uses companion. 
Okay, which is it? One of the commentaries I tend to read suggests that it might have been better for all of these translators just to stick with the Greek paraclete. This is one of those troublesome Greek words, one where we don't have any single word that fully captures the sense of the Greek. This word means one who helps and who comforts and encourages and who counsels and exhorts and who advocates on behalf of. And Jesus tells us this counselor, advocate, helper is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit promised by Jesus so that the disciples are not left orphaned. And Jesus promises not only the coming of the spirit of truth, but the indwelling of that spirit. He will be in you. With that, Jesus also promises that the disciples will know not only that he is in the Father, Jesus promises that they will be in him and he in them. It is in this promise and the promise of the Holy Spirit that the disciples are given a way to continue to love Jesus by keeping his commandments, by loving God and by loving each other, by choosing loving actions, the actions that recognize Christ in each other. As followers of Jesus, that pair of commandments and promise is extended to us as well. In this time of pandemic, those are powerful promises and commandments. We are called to choose actions that love one another as God loves us. In these times, the need to show God's love is great with so many people who are ill or out of work or alone or afraid. It isn't easy when we're all feeling the effects of this pandemic as well. But nobody ever said following God was supposed to be easy. Yet we also have that promise. I will not leave you orphaned. God will not desert us. God is with us. In this time, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit to meet our deep need for a comforter, advocate, helper, counselor, and companion. And we have the promise of the Spirit that will abide in us. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. And now, together, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now invite your intercessions and thanksgivings, either spoken or aloud. Prayers for those in our lives, for the world, and for the nation. For all those who are ill, for the healthcare workers who put their lives at risk every day, for all those who are out and about, making it possible for those of us who are sheltering to shelter in place. We pray for the fearful and the anxious, for all who find this time unsettling and the prospects of an unknown future scary. We ask you to bless them, surround them with a sense of your peace, O oh God, and strengthen your people, your community, to support and care for one another. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time. 
with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, friends, for joining us. We look for you again uh, this coming Thursday as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. We pray that this time will be a time of peace and safety and wellness for you and those that you love. Take care. We'll see you soon.